You're welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Business Incorporated. We're coming to you from Channels Television. Nigeria's October data in indicates that the recession gripping the country deepened as the monthly sales and market growth indexes slumped to new record lows. Now, this is according to a research firm, World Economics, uh, based in London. The firm said that the market growth index dropped to a value of 39.7 in October from 43.5 in September. To meet market challenges, businesses are laying off employees at a greater rate. The starting levels index fell to a new low of 34.3 in the same period. Price inflation for goods and services hit a peak in August, and the prices charged uh, indexes continue to ease uh, further in October to 62. Uh, and overall, the report states that the Nigerian economy continues to suffer from declining economic growth and high inflation. Now let's take you to the local debt market. As we have a Lake Labisi, a fixed income trader with the Guarantee Trust Bank joining us on the program. Lake it's good to have you on the show. Okay, we'll try to uh, get Lake back on the show. We hope to reconnect with him as soon as we can. Now let's take you to Egypt where sugar has become scarce in the North African country. And we've seen that the commodity is off the shelves of major supermarkets across the country with soaring price of the sweetener catching the government off guard. Now the state is now rapidly increasing tenders to import sugar. Borrowing a cup of sugar from your neighbor has rarely been so contentious in Egypt. At supermarkets across the country, sugar has all but vanished, prompting media talk of a crisis and pushing the states to rapidly increase imports despite the acute dollar shortage and soaring global prices of the sweetener. Egypt consumes around 2 million tons of sugar annually, but produces just over 2 million tons, with a gap filled by imports, usually between July and October, when local beet and sugarcane supplies have wound down. But traders said high global sugar prices, which surged 50% over the past year, combined with a rising black market rate for dollars, has made it too expensive and risky for many importers to obtain sugar in recent months. The last time I had sugar here was in the beginning of September. But after that, it vanished from the markets completely. As a supermarket, I have to go buy the sugar for customers from elsewhere. The government has set a limit to the amount of sugar subsidized outlets can sell to citizens per month. Here we have a Lake Olabisi, a fixed income trader with Guarantee Trust Bank back with us on the show. Lake if you can hear me. Uh, let's talk about today's uh, market activities uh, in relation to how yesterday's twin auction by the DMO and the central bank fed. How are the numbers looking? Yeah, well, um, what we've seen in markets is a change of direction. You know, before today, before yesterday, basically, there was the FX fall to by the CBN. And basically, the market thought, you know, CBN was going to mop up a lot of liquidity and went into a tight new mode. But results came out, and I think a lot of liquidity was released in the market. So we're seeing a slightly bullish market right now. So talk to us about the numbers, the rates, the yields. Oh, yeah, well, well, for yesterday's auction, yeah, rates really close around the um, same level. That's the primary um, treasury bills auction. The 90 days close at 14, 17.09 for the 182 and 18.3 for the one year. But what, what was different was, you know, on offer was 138, 138 billion, but um, amount field was just 81 billion. I think that showed the, the tight, tightness in the market as at that point. What about the bond yields? Yeah, well, like I said, you know, all, all through the yield curve, we've seen some some demand sentiment. Bond yields just about 10 bps lower. Um, the more more the civil segment was the more active segment of the market. Okay, so. Do we expect any major developments before the end of the week, which is just tomorrow? Yeah, well, we expect the week should close, close out calmly, you know. The game changer was the FX auction, and with the results out, 
you know, market will probably just stay calm and close tomorrow without, you know, any, any further shocks into the market. So what is the liquidity level? How did we open and where are we at the moment? Well, for money market rates right now, they are from, you know, highs of like 150% when the week opened out, 10, 15% right now. So it really shows the liquidity is back in the system. Thank you so much. Lekon Lab is a fixed income trader with Guarantee Trust Bank. The Democratic Republic of Congo's Central Bank said that it has increased the percentage of deposits banks must keep with it and plans to intervene in the foreign exchange markets to, drop, uh, to prop up the franc currency and contain accelerating inflation. The mining and oil sectors account for some 95% of export revenues in Africa's top copper producer and declining production has hit pressure on the franc. As a result, the government now forecasts inflation, which was less than 1% last year, to run close to 5% by the end of this year. In a statement, the central bank said that it had raised mandatory reserve uh, requirements for domestic banks from 10 to 13% for short-term deposits and from 9 to 12% for long-term deposits. And Kenya has launched the construction of a $1.5 billion railway project that will connect the capital to the Rift Valley town of Naivasha. According to the Kenyan government, the new Chinese finance line being built by China Road and Bridge Corporation uh, is an extension of a cross-country railway being constructed between the Indian Ocean port of Mombasa and the capital Nairobi. That link is expected to reach Nairobi next year and open up to commercial services in the mid-2017. The two projects make up the first stage in a scheme that aims to extend to Uganda and other landlocked countries. The goal is to cut the cost of transport and boost trade by replacing a slower and narrow gauge line. The project adds to a number of infrastructure deals in Africa won by Chinese firms. And finally, on Business Incorporated, internet firm Yahoo has called on the U.S. government to clarify the rules around providing it with users' data. The call comes after the firm was accused of secretly scanning millions of its users' email accounts on behalf of the U.S. government. The government should explain to the public the national security orders that they, sh they issue to internet companies to obtain user data. Yao said that uh, press reports about the firm's mail scanning were misleading. The company said that it has made its request in a letter to the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, and expects adequate and prompt response. With that, we've come to the end of Business Incorporated. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We hope to see you again same time tomorrow. I'm Bolaji Bye for now.